Hi everyone, a very good Wednesday evening. My name is Ramesh and I welcome you to today's session of Orange Tea and Thai's Consumer Empowerment Webinar. Happy New Year to everyone tuning in. As we usher in the new year, I'm sure many of you are making plans to buy a new home, be it for own stay or investment. Orange Tea's Consumer Webinar Series aspires to empower every potential buyer or seller out there with the latest market trends right from the comforts of your home. Our carefully selected speakers will be sharing with you key insights and latest research in the property market to help you make informed and prudent decisions on your future property plans. Thank you all for taking time this evening to join us for this webinar today. Our speaker for today is Mr. Raymond Koo, Vice President of the Sales and Strategy Team at Orange D&T. Raymond has over 11 years of experience in the real estate industry. And the topic for his sharing today is emerging trends in the new normal. Property market transaction volume and prices continue to be strong in these uncertain times. What makes Singapore properties shine in the midst of this pandemic? Stay tuned to know the four emerging trends in the market. Stay informed to be ahead of the game. A gentle reminder for listeners tuning in, if you have any questions during the talk, all you have to do is click on the Q&A option at the bottom of the screen and type in your questions. I'm sure all of you are eager for the, to listen to what Raymond has to share with you. Without further ado, Raymond, over to you. Thank you, Ramesh. Very good evening to everyone. And like what Ramesh says, Happy New Year to all of you. 2021, we are right in the first week. So let me go deep, go straight into the topic itself, emerging trends for the new normal. As we look back, 2020 had been really a very different year. We experienced a circuit breaker. Never before we had this period where we have to slow down. And right now, everywhere we go, we have to check in and check out from our safe entry, taking our phone to scan the QR codes. Working from home become the new normal and Zoom become an integral word or activity that we do almost every other day, just like what, you are, what we are doing right now. And definitely with COVID-19, one of the biggest concern on everybody's mind is about job security and recession. And this kind of is a, is a constant reminder that's going on even every day as we watch the news. But as we look at how Singapore responded and how the market evolved through the whole of last year, this report came out to say that our economy shrunk about 5.8% for the whole of 2020. We can be relieved because we can see that the string was not as bad as the estimate the estimated was 7%. And there was a, and there's a silver lining in quarter four, especially for the last three months of last year, economy grew 2.1% following a 9.5% expansion in the third quarter. So we can see that actually Singapore did survive the pandemic in a way. Furthermore, coming looking ahead of us in 2021 gdp is expected projected by analysts to grow between four to six percent in this coming year so this is phenomenal because this will be expected the highest growth since 2011. why this optimism because of the covid 19 vaccine and definitely we have all believe and hope that this pandemic situation will be under control in the coming months. So looking at the economy, a lot of economies or analysts, they will be talking like, what is the, what is going to be the recovery like? Is it going to be a L shape, U shape, W shape, or even V shape? Looking at the way things are turning out, are panning out, we see that it's almost like a K shape, something which a lot of analysts didn't expect because what we see, we see that the tech sector, retail, software industries are recovering pretty well. What? But on the other hand, travel, entertainment, hospitality are still suffering from the effects of this pandemic. Straits Times also reported that some jobs are lost, but new opportunities are found as well in this new normal. Coming out from this pandemic, one thing to point out is that income disparity and wealth gap will widen further. Although we face this pandemic, but we also know how to emerge better 
with online teleconferencing, chats, digital marketing, it's all speeding up the way that we do life and doing the economy and recovering from the economy. However, one thing to point out is that analysts state recovery likely is going to be uneven. In Singapore, manufacturing sector is leading the recovery with 9.5% year on year growth. This is due to higher output in electronics and biomedical manufacturing, as well as the precision engineering cluster. Besides talking about the economy, one interesting fact that I read this article in Forbes, it says that though there are lost jobs, there are recession looming and all these things that's happening, one point to note is that the greatest wealth transfer will take place in the next three years. This is a result of fiscal stimulus because the economy continues to be pumped with a lot of money and money eventually will end up in the hands of people who know how to redistribute their wealth and create more wealth. See, interesting point to note is that in, in this article, it states that during the Great Depression, actually one third of the people became poor, one third of people maintained their wealth, and one third became very wealthy. What are three keys to be that one third? Three keys I share with you. Number one, prioritize cash flow and reinvest. Number two, make sure your wealth is sustainable. And number three, that is you have to believe you can become the upper one third. So what are the exact classes that we can look at in the economy, in the, in the world around us? Mainly there are five main types of assets, cash, stocks, bonds, commodities, and real estate. All of us should be familiar with all these tools for investments. However, one thing we note is that most investors, or rather when they start investing, a lot of people come in with attitude of greed. And when market turns south, when market go the other way, they will try to exit because of fear. What sets real estate apart is that real estate primarily, I would say, is a needs market because we can't not have a roof over our head. But on top of that, in the long term, it is a great investment tool. So today, I'm gonna to share with you how the market pan out in this economy. At the same time, why real estate is still shining so bright. Let's look at how the market pans out in 2020. First of all, we see that landed property has been really a top choice. Though it was 2020 was an unprecedented year, the market was still very hot, the landed market, because buyers are seeking ways to gut their wealth. In total, last year, the first nine months of 2020, 1,142 transactions blocked for landed properties. This is even more than 2019. 2019, 1,118. And the whole actually rose faster to 4.9 billion, 11% more than the previous year of 4.4 billion. Point to note, is that the sellers ain't selling because of distress, but rather landed property is always seen as a wealth preservation asset, especially in a land scarce Singapore. Not just the landed sector, we also see an interesting phenomenon that is in the shop house sector. After the circuit breaker, shop house deals rose to 175 million in the third quarter from 117 million in the previous quarter. The PSF for shop houses surged as much as 40%. Why? You may ask me, how come? Because shop houses give very good rental yield and capital growth because it has flexibility. It can become office, it can become restaurants and also boutique hotels. And with no new supply in the pipeline, Definitely shop houses demand remains strong. It's always seen like a collector's item, if you ask me. But one thing that is shop houses comes at a premium. Usually most shop houses come in excess of seven to 10 or $20 million because of its rarity, right? Besides landed and shop houses strong performance, 
we also see that the private residential market, the private residential homes are performing well. Looking at both volume and price index, we see very strong numbers. Private home prices up 2.1% for third straight quarter gain, a total of 9,760 new homes were sold in 2020. Investors' exuberance in the primary market spill over in not just the primary, but also the secondary market. Secondary market, which is the resale market, saw 9,905 private resale homes transacted in 2020. This was even 7.2% higher than 2019. Not just the private market, but also the HDB market, which really astounded a lot of uh, people who are watching the market. The HDB segment also rose about 2.9% in the fourth quarter. And this is the steepest increase in the HDB resale prices since the quarter of 2013. Imagine for the last seven years, there's not such increase. So it means that people are really alive in the market. Buyers are still transacting, sellers are still selling. An interesting point to note is that why are buyers still buying? Because they hold a long-term investment approach. At the same time, underlying, I would say, there is very strong demand because property is not something that you decide overnight. I would say they make preparation and though recession hits or rather uncertainty hits, they have already prepared and they still see opportunities. That's why they still make that purchase. As a result, let's see going ahead analysts is saying that 2021 will be a year whereby private home prices is going to rise another one to four percent expected to sell between 8,005 to 9,005 new homes probably about 9,000 homes and hdb segment as well expected to rise about two to five percent last but not the least resale volume is expected to increase by 10 percent so what are the emerging trends we can see in this new normal i've i've done my introduction give you a brief overview about what's happening in the market let's dive deep straight into the topic for today i'm going to share with you not four but five five emerging trends for the new in the new normal number one technology covid 19 has hit us but there's some good out of it Humankind came and we reinvented ourselves. And one of the way which really transformed our lives is through technology. What do we see? New trends like online shopping, digital payment, remote working, distance learning. All these have really changed the way we do life. Digital payments enable people to make payments online and goods and services still can transact. Remote work done through technology like virtual meetings, cloud technology, work calibration. So all this, in addition to, 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 to really prevent like, you know, the, the spread of virus, remote work really more than that, just to stop a virus from transmitting, it really saves time. Today, you can hear, hear me loud and clear. It saves time from you making your way to an auditorium, right? As a result of technology, 191 countries announced or implemented that schools and universities, although they closed, but yet they started online courses. In the past, this may not be something that we thought it would happen so quickly, but today COVID-19 has truly caused technology rise and will make things evolve faster. More than just living or working from home, this tech trend, I can say, not just affect work or shopping, it affects the way we live. Look at Singapore. Even our HDB has implemented smart living. And implemented smart living, this was reported in the Straits Times for 1,190 families in Pongo recently. Smart power sockets, distribution boards enable them to monitor their energy consumption. Smart parking system which you don't need to have gantries, and there's even an option to pay by your credit card through an app. 
sensors that gives you ideas about how this uh, real estate services working and they can predict maintenance that's required and also smart lighting so it's actually technology has really changed the way it's changing the way we live and i believe things are going to get even more interesting in time to come smart home trends is a new norm according to this article it report that not just your lightings or your automated window blinds or doorbells these devices don't really become smart just because they are plugged onto your internet but it will evolve to become even smarter what do i mean it means that eventually they will start to learn through ai your habits it will start to learn how you behave and over time what happens is that they can see and read a certain pattern and will help you to anticipate and make decision faster means what this report says that even like next time you have a you have a fridge it can it has smart fridge it can even 3m what do you need for your grocery runs and things like that so it'll be interesting and this report says the value of smart home devices is set to grow from 55 billion to 174 billion by year 2025. besides technology how what else do we see in this new normal second point is that we see a trend of bigger spaces what do i mean by bigger spaces because of the way we see our residential home we don't just see it as a place where we rest it has become a, a office space it become a a place of learning for the first time since january last year the monthly sales of bigger units exceeded 100 hitting 112 in june 125 in july and 151 in august transactions in july hit about 100, 337 august 397 this was the highest number since january last year why because the trend is that people are spending more homes working from home they definitely want to look at the way the space work out for them it is more than just a space where you live or be with your family and as bigger units another trend we notice as bigger units tend to be pricier buyers don't mind moving further out to suburban or city fringe in order to find more affordable units this work from home trend also changed the way that developers design new condo blocks instead of building more just just space but they'll they'll change communal facilities like pavilion and barbecue pits they will add more things like co-sharing spaces for reading for working equipped with wi-fi or even the 5g network so we see this trend you can see a rising trend from june july august onwards and especially the ocr sector and also the rcr sector is seeing more transactions for bigger spaces to fit their needs number three besides technology and bigger spaces strong underlying demand what do i mean here the mes came out with an article in somewhere first or first december to urge prudence in property purchase because he wants to remind singaporeans that hey you have to be prudent we see that singaporeans account for more than 81.9 percent of the transaction in the third quarter according to mes so definitely the government is coming out to, to warn us and because it is a big purchase definitely they do not want people to haphazardly go in as a result to promote prudency we see that the coh came out in september to disallow developers from reissuing options this move i believe definitely is to encourage financial prudence make sure that buyers only commit when they are ready to exercise the option within the validity period meaning there's no multiple reissue of options from september onwards however what did we notice after this no issuance came out despite all this restriction what happened the sales continue to do well Penrose sold 
341 units in one day. Landmark sold 90% of their 120 units launch. Clavon sold 70% of their 640 units. All these projects show that the underlying demand is so strong that despite a new uh, stock reissuance of, 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 of option, buyers still think that, hey, there is still opportunities and it is still a right move to buy a property because they take a long-term approach. Planning to buy a property is not an overnight decision. And of course, I also, uh, I also think this probably is due to the 20, one of the factors is that there's 24,000 HDB owners who reach MOP status. The dream of owning a condo is still one of the desires of aspiring Singaporeans. Looking ahead, not just, not just talking about the, the launches, not just talking about HDB. One more thing we have to see, why is there a strong demand? is that buyers recognize a dwindling supply of unsold units. Unsold units fallen to 26,578 from the peak of 37,799 in 2019 Q1. Number of unsold units was 23,000 when the collective sale of Shunfu happened. So we are just like another 3,000 3, units to go. In May 2016, if if I want to remind all of you here that 2016 Sunfu Veil uh Sunfu Elmblock happened. Following that year, in June 2017, you know Veil Elmblock happened. And this kickstart the Omblock fever. Why do I say kickstart the Omblock fever? Before that, it seems like this om omblock tendency or this word has went out of uh the developer's mind. The last one that was done, the big deal, was Feral Court, which is almost like more than 10 years ago. Each owner in Yunosville got about 2.3 million from this on block. So after that, a slew of on block happened. Let's look at the supply. Let's look at what is the take up rate in these projects, in this on block fever that took place after Yunosville. Jetscape, which is formerly the Shunfu Vale. Today, or rather as of yesterday, all these figures that I'm showing you right now is uh, with respect to yesterday, all right? 5th of January. Jetscape today is 90.76%, so living with you only 96 units to 100% sell out. Park Estar, which just now I mentioned, you know, Vale formerly, is 98.22% sold. Only another 25 units is totally sold out. Sterling Residences, a GRS land, 94.6% sold. Only another 68 units to go. Riverfront is 92.22%, only another 115 units to go. Affinity at Serangoon, 865 units sold. Just another 100 over, the, over units is sold out. Florence Residences, 67.3%, another 32% to go. Treasure at Tampines, the biggest launch, 2,203 units, altogether 77.35%. So outstanding results. Last but not the least, Park Clementis, the last one to be launched, is also 71% sold. What does this tell us? All these mega launches, the take up rate is fantastic. Imagine if you are Definitely one of the buyers who visited one of the show flats before and looking at the take-up rate, you would definitely know what I am telling you. Another reason why the strong underlying demand is that we can see that the supply is dwindling as well. There's not much supply. Confirmed list of just 1,605 residential units is on the list for first half of 2021. This is low in comparison with the former five years. These prices are underpinned with the expectation that home buying could improve in the following year. Because of what? Because they expected the rebound in the economy. Let's look at recent GRS land bids results. Tanamera Kichil, this uh, OCR land plot, is attracted a total of 15 bidders 
15 developers fighting for one piece of land. The emerging winner got it at 930 PSF PPR, expecting to sell 1007 to 1008. Another one is Ishun EC. This plot attracted seven bidders, transacted at 576 PSF PPR, expecting to sell at 1001 PSF. As the article says, there is an increase in confidence among the developers because the economy has seen its worst and expecting to return to growth in the coming year. So developers are optimistic. There is an optimistic uh, feel in the market that it fewer this talk. This talk that probably there will be an on block revival. Wow. Strong demand plus developers hungry for land. This few talks that on block may revive again because in 2020, only two plots were concluded. And like what I mentioned just now, the 2016 on block started when the unsold inventory fell to 23,300 units. So today we are about 26,000 unsold, just 3,000 units more. Probably it will spark off another cycle. But analysts did say, that they expect the smaller developments this time will likely benefit because of the new slew of measures that developers have to pay higher. At the same time, developers have to pay higher because to, to entice the owners to release and to agree to the on-block sales, definitely they have to hang a big carrot in front of them. So what trends have we seen so far? Technology, bigger spaces, strong underlying demand. Number four, Singapore is a shining gem. Why do I say Singapore is a shining gem? This COVID-19, in a way, is a storm. It's an unprecedented storm. But East Asia fatalities fell. It's actually about below 10 deaths per million citizens. In contrast, Europe and American countries reported 500 to 800 deaths per million. Why is that so? A few reasons were stated because of cultural differences. Asians are more self-reliant. There's a respect for authority. At the same time, China, Taiwan, and Singapore had experienced SARS before. And South Korea dealt with MERS in 2015. Once COVID hit, Singapore was very aggressive in imposing restriction, took very strong actions against rule breakers. A few countries really can recreate what Singapore had rolled out. Our culture, our good governance, our healthcare system, our tracking system, it all tells you about how Singapore had contained coronavirus. It tells you about how blessed we are to be living in this land. So, so much so that coming into this COVID or rather going through this COVID, we see MNCs like Johnson & Johnson, Amazon, all these con con big com companies, they came to assess and put their money into Singapore. Why? Not just because of geographical location, political stability or our innovation, uh, innovation ecosystem, but rather other strong points like our legal system, our workforce, all this, I can say, is all strong points that Singapore, as what one of the CEOs said, Singapore is pro-business, ranked as one of the friendliest countries to set up a company and continue to be a regional headquarters. So definitely, we are a shining gem in the midst of this a pandemic. Companies like Tencent, Zoom, ITQ, ITE at the same time all came to come into Singapore. Deloitte reported that there are so many benefits to put a regional HQ in Singapore. One of the best reasons is that the tax environment and our role as a financial and economic hub makes it a fantastic choice in this region. We are also given this award that we are top in Asia Pacific most innovative nation. This is not a mere 
easy uh, award. We outbeat countries like Norway, Switzerland, Denmark, and even Sweden. It's ranked across 131 economies based on 80 indicators. We emerge champion because of all these factors. And I can say we should be proud to be Singaporeans. But more than just what we did during this COVID, how about looking ahead? What's ahead in, in, in our country? What's ahead in our real estate scene or rather our development? Is that there is a lot of developments going to happen. Our Changi Airport, of course, I believe one day flying will resume back to normal. T5 will increase capacity from 50 million passengers per year to 135 million passengers by the end of 2030. Tuas Megaport will increase the capacity more than double to 65 million units of cargo, doubling its current port capacity. In the future, up northeast, our Pongo Digital District will generate 28,000 jobs when it's up and running. What else? Our Jurong Lake District, 100,000 new jobs expected to be created because 20,000 new homes are going to be built in our Jurong Lake District of 360 hectares. Not just all this Sungai Gadok, 500 hectares of land up north is going to have new growth industries in agri-tech. Last but not the least, as all of you should have heard by now, the Greater Southern Waterfront. 2,000 hectares of land is going to be revamped. That is the size of 2,000 new homes will be built just on Keppel Club. Last but not the least, I want to share with you why there is a why why property market is still very alive is because it is seen as a splendid savings plan. What do I mean here? One thing that truly we see is that mortgage rate is at all time low. Today, if you go to a bank to get a home loan, it's as low as one point one one percent because cyber rate is only at zero point four one. Let's say you take a million dollar loan and 30 years repayment period. If interest rates is about 1.11 to 1.2, you are paying an installment about 3,002 and your interest goes to about $913. You're just paying $913 of interest. Your principal actually you clear 2,003. Means what? Only 27% of your repayment goes to interest. As compared, if interest rates were high at 3.5, you are paying as high as almost 65% of repayment to interest. So the low mortgage environment, which is expected to be around for the next three years to five years even, because of the expansionary approach that the government are taking, I believe it will make property shine even stronger. What do I mean here? Because today, when you do property investment let's say you rent out a property you will likely get these three types of payments or rather this kind of cash this kind of uh, savings plan you get three income capital appreciation cash flow and principal capital appreciation cash flow and principal paid so what do i mean let me dive into some numbers for you to see for you to understand this better Let's say you buy investment property. All right, you buy investment property. Let's say it's about 1.2 million. Let's say a two bedroom, 1.2 million. And your loan about 900K, which is about 75% of the property price for 30 years. The repayment, 300,000. Stamp duty of about 32,000. Monthly rent, if you collect about 2,009. And your installment works out to be about 2,978. At this point, you may say, Raymond, doesn't make sense. I have to pay $78 more. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Okay, hold on a minute. Give me some time. Let me make, work out the numbers for you to see. Rental yield is about 2.9%. But the point I want to start to introduce to you is to remind you is that when you pay 2978 don't forget that not so much is going to interest. Naturally, a huge portion is going to the principal. 
So what does the numbers look like? Let's roll it out for you in front of you to see. I like this website, you can DBS website. It shows you the numbers very clearly. If I pump in the numbers, 900,000, I take a 30 year loan, at the same time, my interest rate, I even put is an ascending order, 1.2%, 1.4%, 1.6%, 1.8%, it's ascending, all right? Let's say you hold the property for five years. What happens? How much are you going to get in, in totality? Let's see, all right? So five years, I work out in the table. Just now, I, I've selected out that portion. In five years, you will pay about $65,000 in interest on the other hand you will be clearing about ninety-eight thousand in principal all right what does this mean if you collected what does the cash flow looks like if you collected rent let's say two thousand nine per month it will amount to hundred and seventy four thousand you pay maintenance fee let's say about two hundred dollars per month you take hundred and seventy four thousand minus the interest minus the principal paid minus the maintenance fee ah it gives you a negative of thousand four hundred dollars you say wow payment doesn't make sense right okay okay hold on this is just talking about cash flow let's look at the other three two other components let's just say property price just increased two percent per year you hold for five years i'm saying two percent which happened in 2020 property price went up two percent two percent not a lot it will appreciate about 120,000. What is your net gain? Net gain is your principal plus your cash flow plus your capital appreciation. All right, of course, minus away stamp duty that is a cost that you have to pay for owning, buying a property. 98,000 minus 1,004 plus 120,000 minus 32,006. It works out 184,000. Looking at ROE, 184,000 divided by 300,000, the outlay that you have to put, the return on equity is as high as 61%. Isn't it great numbers? This is possible because of the leveraging nature of property. Looking at it as a savings plan definitely makes sense because let's say you put in 300,000 and three years, uh, five years later, you get back close to 484,000. It really helps you to, to save and every five years you can just do this savings plan and of course why would i say to end up my talk for today why real estate is a splendid way for investment and why buyers are still buying instead of in in this in the midst of this uncertainty because it serves at every stage of your life when you're starting out most of us use it for own stay and after which you collect rental you buy your second property or so on and so forth. And of course, one day more than just you want to look for capital appreciation, last but not the least, when you are retiring, it serves as a great way to hedge against inflation and wealth preservation. And of course, you can even withdraw uh, value out from the property without even selling. So I shared with you five emerging trends from in this new normal, I hope that you have gained some insights. Five key things, technology, bigger spaces, underlying demand, Singapore is a shining gem, and it is a great savings plan. So that ends my talk today, but I, I want to pass the time now to Ramesh, and Ramesh, back to you. Hi, Raymond. Thank you so much for that sharing. Uh, very insightful. Not only do you give a good overview of the emerging trends, you even showed us uh, good savings plans so for those of us who are not saving enough. I think 2021, this is the best plan you can have. I've checked with all the banks. Uh, the interest rates are not very high. So something to really maybe think about for 2021. And I... Uh, would like to resonate with uh, Raymond's earlier points, which one third of the people are going to be the ones that lose money, stay the same or make the right decisions and uh, make some money during this uh, pandemic. I think it's an opportunity for all of us or something for all of us to think about. A gentle reminder for all listeners tuning in, if you have any questions, um, 
you all you have to do is click on the Q&A option. Uh, we still have one more speaker for this evening. Our next speaker is Dave Lee, Associate District Director with Orange Tea and Thai. With over 10 years of, years of experience in the industry, Dave is also the project IC for various high profile projects, including the latest mega launch, Nomenton Park, which is currently previewing. And for those of you property hunters out there who are still looking for a new home, I request you to stay tuned for some more time to hear Dave talk about Nomenton Park, uh, the key reasons why you should consider this seriously and his own views because he has been on the ground for the past uh, one week during the preview. But the preview has one more week to go. So I think he's the best person to share with you why Nomenton Park is the hottest project in the market right now. Dave, over to you. Hi, uh, thanks Ramesh. Thank you Raymond as well for the insightful uh, sharing on the emerging trends. So, um, Amesh, can you let me share my screen, please? So today, uh, hold, yeah. hold on a second, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So today, actually, I will share with all of you uh, on the ground that I've been in uh, Normentum Park for the past uh, few days. Uh, I also observed that we have actually more than uh, 3,000 people visited the show gallery already. So uh, why this Momentum Park actually attracted uh, so many uh, buyers that actually visit us? So I actually will share with you uh, some of the key reasons uh, and of course some of the key benefits. So buying a home, I think, I think uh, to have benefits is, is very important, right? So I'm going to share with all of you now. So I hope all of you can see my screen now. All right, so what are the five key benefits? So number one, I'll be sharing with all of you on the past price trend and why past price trend is so important because uh, past price trend, trend will actually uh, lead to uh, first mover advantage. And of course, the appeal of RCR projects, supply and demand, strategic location, and of course, the exit strategy uh, if you purchase a unit in Momentum Park. Right, so let's go to past price trend first. Right, so I, I spoke about first mover advantage. So let's do some, um, uh, let's, let's check on some of the past price trend, especially in 2018, after the on-block cycle when all the mega launches and all the new launch actually launched, launched, all right? So let's take a look at Kenrich Hill Residences. We see that it was actually launched in November 2018. All right, so the average, uh, per square foot that they uh, actually launch is uh, between $1,006 to $1,007 per square foot. And of course, in 2020, we see prices actually actually went up, right? And of course, developer uh, in 2020, last year, uh, are selling between $1,008 to $1,009. We also see some of the uh, highest transaction close to $2,000 per square foot, all right? And of course, I'll be also sharing with you this uh, a mega launch called Sterling Residences, also launched in 2018, all right? And we also see that the average launch price here is between $1,006 to $1,007 per square foot. And of course, Sterling, we all know that uh, price today went up as well to about $1,009 to $2,000 per square foot. So if you look at the transactions here, the smaller bedrooms, they are actually uh, smaller units they are transacting around $2,000 per square foot. And of course, for two bedroom units, they are transacted about $2,000 per square foot as well. All right, of course, uh, Park Esta, we see the same price trend, $1,617. And of course, prices went up uh, to $1,008 to $1,009 per square foot. As well as Jetscape, where actually Raymond had actually shared with all of you that uh, supply for all these mega launches are actually diminishing in the market. Uh, Launched in 2018, 1617, and today we see prices went up to 1008 to in fact 1009, right? A square foot. So it is also safe to say those who harvest in 2018 are already sitting on profits. So, uh, like what Raymond also shared with all of you just now, it's like a savings plan. So I would say people who started saving back in 2018, in 2021, they would have already seen profits right in this property in their own property so we also spoke about uh, uh momentum park so let's take a look right let me share something very interesting with all of you momentum park 
at on block site as well back in 2017. All right, we see the estimated break even price at 1482. That was back then in 2017. But because of COVID 19, all right, we see that there are uh, steps to curb transmission uh, for COVID 19 will actually, in fact, raise construction costs by approximately another 5%. So, so the new break even would likely cross 1,005 per square foot. So we see that this would be the uh, new uh, break even price for, for the construction for Normandon Park. So today, if I can bring you back to 2018, what would all of you do, all right? Where prices start to slowly come up here at this point, all right? And the good news I want to share with all home buyers today who have logged in, Momentum Park will actually launch at an average of 16XX to 17XX per square foot. So of course, this is uh, these are some of the price matrix. Of course, uh, some of the higher floor units, right? We will actually see, uh, we can expect some of the higher floor with a full C view, right? Uh, crossing $1,008 per square foot. But of course, for most of the units, it's going to still transact between one six to one seven xx per square foot. So these are some of the guide prices, right? All our orange tea agents will, able, will be able to share with all of you. Like for units that are facing actually the C view, right? We actually see that uh, for two bedroom compact, all right? We see that it's between 1.1 to 1.2 million. Now, of course, for two plus study, these are some of the guide price, three compact, four and five bedroom, shops and terraces as well. So next, I will share with all of you what are the appeals of Asia. Right? Raymond spoke about volumes went up right after the circuit breaker, right? And of course, in phase two, we see that volume actually went up significantly. We have crossed more than 1,300 uh, uh, units sold, right? Of course, uh, for new launches and existing launch, it actually outperformed 2019's volume, right? In terms of a month-on-month -month sale, all right? Quarter-on-quarter -quarter sale as well. And of course, after the guideline, we see there was a slight dip. That is because there wasn't any new launches in October. But in November, once again, even though uh, the government actually stepped in, URA, with the no reissuance of OTP, even with new launches, we still see volume went up as well. So when we look at the, the uh, transaction volume, I'm sure most of you would also be curious which sectors right, which sectors are actually performing well. Let's take a look. So in fact, ASEA actually performed well in Q3 2020. So let's take a look at this portion that I'm going to share with all of you, right, after the uh, opening of the phase two. In September and August, of course, we see that ASEA outperformed OCR and CCR in terms of sale, all right? This is developer sale by region. So we see buyers are actually coming into the ASEAN market to buy property that are located in the rest of central region, all right? And of course, why are buyers taking this step to buy an ASEAN project? Why? Let's take a look, all right? Momentum Park will, will also be an ASEAN project, all right? And we see that the average uh, uh, per square foot Right for the current 2021 prices are between 1,007 to even like one per bank or even Avenue South, we have reached a high of $2,400 per square foot. Even for Park Clementis, we see the average per square foot at 1,643. And of course, the highest per square foot transacted for Park Clementis is 1,762. So I will say Momentum Park, if you were to launch an average of 1,617, uh, our price will be very, very close to uh, an OCR project as well. So why? Why are buyers taking action in ASEAN region? Let's take a look at this uh, chart here. We know that, you know, there are only a very few launches ASEAN coming up in 2021. And of course, if you were to look at the land cost here, and of course, another project called Live at MD, we see that there's a difference of about $300 per square foot in terms of land cost. So after construction costs and, and of course, marketing costs, 
we can expect Leaf at MB to actually launch between $2,000 to $2,200 per square foot. So RCR, for RCR project, most have already launched here. We see from January to September 2020. And of course, Nomentum Park could possibly be the most attractively priced new launch at RCR in 2021. So next, I will be sharing on supply and demand. All right. Raymond have also shared with all of you, many of the new launches actually launch in November. I actually uh, have very strong take ups, right? And of course, we also see supplies are actually diminishing, all right, here at this point. And of course, fewer land sales. So this is one interesting uh, thing that to share with all of you out there. So Raymond actually also shared for this Tanamera site, this government land sale, we actually attracted 15 bidders for this particular site. So the break even is estimated at 1512 as also Raymond have also touched on. It's going to launch this project in OCI. It's likely going to launch at $1,007 to $1,008 per square foot. So if you look at this uh, master plan, this map here, uh, Tanamera site is actually located on the east region. So where is Momentum Park? Momentum Park is actually located at the rest of central region, right? Highlighted in the orange area here. So there's also another two uh, uh, parcel of land, right? That is going to be a release in June 2021. There is uh, these two particular sites at Slime Barrack Rice, Parcel A and Parcel B. So these two sites also located in One North, right? So my question to you is this. So if Tanamira was attracted 15 bidders back in November, so how much do you think developer will bid for these two sites that are located in One North as well in Buena Vista, right? So my guess is your guess, as we all know, land costs keep rising throughout the years, all right? Even our HDBs, BTO uh, uh, prices keep going up, right? It has never come down as well, right? So of course, uh, Raymond have also touched on uh, supply of mega launches actually has dipped. And of course, these are some of the available one and two bedrooms in terms of starting price. We see that uh, some of these RCR projects prices have in fact crossed 1.3 or even $1.5 million, right? Most of them are sitting uh, at about 950,000 approximately. And of course, a two bedroom where most of them actually, some of them actually hit uh, 1.2 million, 1.8 million. 1.499 million for some of the two bedrooms here. And of course, these are the three, four, and five. Okay, so now let's take a look at um, launches, an overview of District 5 launches since 2018. All right, so we see that Kenridge Hill Residences, right, launched in uh, November 2018. We have uh, sold a balance, or uh, we have sold 75%. We have a balance available unit of, uh, as of uh, today, is about 139 approximate. And we see Park Clementis launched August 2019, has very strong take up rate, more than 1,000 unit transacted, right? In less than two years at 69% sold now. And of course, for some of the other launches that are launched in November uh, 2018, May 2018 has, has in fact crossed more than 85% and 90% respectively. So for Clevon, the one that was recently launched, sold more than 74% with a balance unit of 167 units only. So these are some of the uh, supply in terms of bedroom size in respective uh, uh, District, like for example, District 5. Now we see that Twinview do not have any one and two bedrooms and we do not have any three bed or four beds left. And of course, for Whistler Grand, we do not see any two and three bedrooms. And for Park Clementis, we all know that it actually uh, cross one uh, 1,000 unit. So for one bedroom, there isn't any supply. So for two bedrooms, dual key and of course two plus study, we do not see any supply left in Park Clementis as well. All right. For Kenridge, we do not see any one bedroom. And of course, two compact was uh, fully sold. 
For Clevon, we see very strong pickup rates in one plus study, two bedroom, and two premium. So, of course, Momentum Park will be the new supply in District 5, right? And of course, let's take a look at uh, this one north area. So, there are only four projects in one north. And of course, we have Dover Park View, Heritage View, one north residences, and the Rochester. So, I would say, right, in this uh, one north area, supplies are actually severely uh, under supply. All right, we see, I'm going to share with you, there are only four existing launches and one new supply coming up at One North Eden. And of course, that's what uh, is located in the Northern One North region. And of course, in the Southern One North, there's only one new supply and that's Normanton Park. So let's take a look at uh, uh, the price for Normanton Park. All right, it's going to be priced very attractively Right, one bedroom from uh, uh, seven to nine hundred XX, where most of the projects are actually sold out uh, in District Five. For two bedroom, it'll be between one million, from one million for for of course Park Clementis and Kenridge, we see prices, and of course for Trilling, Twinview, and Clevon is fully sold out. And these are some of the, the very attractively priced uh, units in Normanton Park. So let's let's understand why. Uh, Normanton Park will be located in a very strategic location that is very, very important for property home buyers in today's market, right? So, of course, we see that uh, uh, Normanton Park is an RCR project, right? It's located within the central region, right? It's within a Queenstown planning region. From Normanton Park, we are 11 minutes to both CBDs, three minutes to one North Business District, and of course, we have the NUS three minutes drive away as well. All right, it has a boost excellent location because it's located right smack in the middle of Singapore. We also see transport by, by, uh, by vehicles. We are actually very, very connected to many of these amenities, of course, business district in Singapore. And of course, this is also super important for home buyers, right? And of course, also super important for investors. We are located within business hubs like um, Maple Tree Business City, Singapore Science Park, NUH, NUS, One North, uh, Star Vista, right? Fusion Police and Biopolis. Of course, we are five minute drive to Dover Education Belt. These are some of the uh, amenities, child cares, a minutes away. And of course, the developer are planning to supply and provide two years of free shuttle bus service to Cambridge MRT Station and Bonite Vista MRT Station, where you can uh, have your NTUC fare price and of course your cold storage at Star Vista. And of course, when Raymond spoke to all of you that our tech sector in Singapore actually, in terms of economy of uh, growth, uh, actually went up. But do you all know that actually Normanton Park is situated along Singapore's tech corridor, all the way from the western side to the central here, where Nonbenton Park is actually uh, located. We are very near to Greater One North. If you take a look at Greater One North itself, Nonbenton Park is actually tucked right beside Science Park and Cambridge Park, right below One North. They actually have uh, um, one loss, if you ask me, was actually conceptualized in 2001. Uh, so JTC was actually appointed uh, to lead the master plan and develop this 200 acres of development. And of course, today, one North has grown to become an icon of Singapore knowledge economy. And of course, uh, uh, many, many jobs here, uh, many, many, uh, many tenants can be found here as well in one North. All right. Some of the big players have actually moved in, like Grab, who had a headquarter there. And of course, One North is going to have an extension, a Dover Knowledge District here. And these are some of the big companies uh, in One North. We have MediaCorp, Walt Disney, Shell, PNG. And of course, uh, for Science Park 1 and Science Park 2, we have some of the uh, 
We have many MNCs companies. And of course, for NUS, all right, it's Asia's, voted Asia's number one university, all right? And of course, we have more than 50,000 students and staff here. So today, if you are uh, if you are a home buyer, and of course, you are investors as well, if you are working here, or if you are, you are planning to buy a unit to rent out, all right, these are, are very good numbers, very healthy numbers that you can look at. And of course, uh, if you ask me, because we are, we are very near to this tech corridor, I'm going to share with you also, for fresh grads, 8 out of 10 highest paying jobs are actually tech jobs, all right, out of these 21, all right, with a gross uh, monthly sal salary, and of course, they are above the 75th percentile, all right. So, in summary, less too many numbers for all of us to digest. So, I'll put it in very simple summary for all of you. 50,000 knowledge worker, 400 leading uh, companies, 800 innovative startups, 300 MNCs companies, 10,000 jobs, 28,000 undergrads, 8,000 postgrads, 8,000 staff in NUS, and of course, all in all, in total, we have more than 120,000 jobs opportunity in uh, this greater One North area. All right, and of course, if you are buying for investment, so these are your potential uh, tenant pool with high income, like researchers, engineers, specialists, professors, uh, research and development, uh, researcher, and analysts. And of course, if you were to look at this master plan, master plan uh, uh, planning, we see that one uh, Normanton Park is tucked right at the bottom of One North, and of course, we are located right at the bottom of Business Park education site, hospital, and plenty of uh, uh, great investment opportunity here, all right? And of course, for second CBD, another 10,000 jobs coming up, Jurong Innovation District, like what Raymond has shared with all of you, all right? We are actually 17 minutes drive away to Jurong Innovation District and 11 minutes drive away to the second CBD in future. So what are your exit strategy? So let's talk about the future potential. So buying a home, knowing your future potential is very, very important, all right? So the next future potential I will share with all of you is the Greater Southern Waterfront. We are only five minutes drive away. And of course, in the National Day Rally back in 2019, uh, our Prime Minister, Mr. Lee Sen Long, actually said they have plans and, and to transform all right, it into a new major gateway. And of course, uh, he called it the Pongo, by the way, uh, if you watch the National Day Rally. And how big is this development? So today, if I'm a home, bu home buyer, where do I put my money? But first, we have to ask ourselves, where does the government put the money? Where the government put the money is where you can put the money in as well. And of course, if you look at the the Greater Southern Waterfront is six times the size of the current Marina Bay. And of course, by 2020, 2027 and 2014, we see that the port will actually shift to Tuas. And of course, uh, Raymond spoke about Kappa Club lease will expire in two years time. That was back then in 2019. And of course, it's going to expire today. And it, it has enough land to build 9,000 housing units. Right, and of course, several big companies have are uh, already in uh, uh, this. They're gonna build more homes, and of course, let's talk about play. All right, we all know where is Saint James now, and of course, these two power station, power station A and power station B, they're gonna be redeveloped. All right, redeveloped into a place like our current Saint James power station. And of course, this Brani terminal, once it's moved out, they will be transformed. They will be uh, uh, turned into an attraction, just like our Universal Studio at Sentosa. And it will also serve as an extension of Sentosa as well. And of course, our rail corridor, because of uh, Kenridge Park and some of the park that is very well connected to Normanton Park, uh, we will serve as uh, one of the uh, place to pass through the cor uh, rail corridors. 
And of course, they are, they, in under the master plan itself, we see that there's a new future road under the URA master plan. All right. So they are actually going to be surrounded by uh, employment cluster. We see here where more employment cluster can actually, uh, you can actually potentially rent or even if you work here, you can actually travel home uh, nearer. All right. And of course, uh, after putting in this image, we see that uh, you can actually move downwards towards second CBD and even towards the CBD. So by 2025, we also have the full circle line coming up where three new stations uh, will be completed, all right? Keppel, Cantonment, and Prince Edward. And of course, after this tree was built from Harbourfront, it will connect directly to the Marina Bay area. And of course, more business uh, space are actually expected uh, in one north area where you see all these circle up uh, place, all right, all these uh, circle up. You see that they are actually not fully developed yet in one north. If you were to drive to the actual site, you will see that these circle up places, right, that I've actually highlighted to all of you, you will realize that they are actually empty lands now. They have yet to develop. So expect more jobs. There, and of course, expect more tenants there if you are buying a home for investment. And of course, in this uh, Straits Time article, where in, in 21st of uh, December 2020, we see that HTB is going to launch 17,000 BTO flats in 2021 this year, including uh, uh, Bidadari, Queenstown, where our under uh, master plan planning region we are, Normanton Park is within Queenstown. There are also four plots over here, right? Likely to be the location of the Queenstown HDB. So uh, this is one of the exit strategy where you can actually engage the HDB upgraders next time when you want to sell your property. So once again, I'm gonna share something very simple for all of you to, to, to actually visualize. If you purchase Momentum Park at around 1,006 to $1,007 per square foot, all right, in 2021, right, in 2021, Keppel Club will redevelop. And in 2022, right, the integrated resort, right, uh, will attract more jobs and add new attractions. And in 2023, we know that Momentum Park will TOP. And in 2025, when the full circle line is completed, in 2027, Dover one north, uh, one north extension of the Dover Knowledge District will be up and running. By 2029, the re relocation of the port to Tuas to free up land for more attractions. And of course, by 2029, Queenstown HDB uh, upgraders, which is, is five years MOP. So by 2020, this 10 years plan, all right. And of course, with so many exciting developments coming up, will Momentum Park in 10 years' time reach $1,009 to even $2,000 and beyond? Right. With so many exciting developments uh, coming up, I'm sure the uh, Momentum Park is really, really going to be very optimistic in terms of capital appreciation. Right. So next, to share with all of you, um, the same developer, Kingsford, I will share with you some interesting insights, all right, that I have gathered. So their past project, Kingsford Water Bay, we see that this particular unit, 0307, right, buyers who bought this unit back in April 2018, in fact, paid the price of one, three, but for the same size and same at 0907, we see prices actually developers sold as a new launch, a new sale, back at 2015, they purchased it at, at 1.111. So, Momentum Park is a new uh, a new launch coming up. All right. Of course, this is the preview period. So, why am I sharing with all of you? Why am, why am I sharing this with all of you? The reason is very simple. Because the developer will actually slowly increase their prices as more and more units are being sold. So this is also another perfect example. 0401, who they bought it at 918 back in 2017. All right? And of course, uh, for people who bought it, for buyers who bought it earlier, 0901 at a higher floor, 
bought it at 830,000. So when you sell, when you exit, we also realize, all right, those who purchase earlier had an advantage of $74,000, right? Those who bought one year later, all right, at the same stack, stack 63 here, 1563 and 763, all right? In fact, people who bought later make lesser profits. So it is very important to actually buy a new launch at its initial stage. And of course, after sharing with you the exit plan, uh, I just want to share with all of you, most of the transactions, in fact, for uh, most of the units price for Momentum Park would be uh, between 1 million or below 1.5 million, right? And of course, we see that uh, below 1.5 million transactions in 2018 to 2019 is very healthy at 11,300 approximate. And of course, one year later, we see uh, this bracket, all right? below 1.5 million, we see transactions are still very healthy. So it means that if you're buying a property in 2021, all right, you want to buy a property that falls within this range. So even with inflation coming up in the next few years, or even when the COVID pandemic is gone, all right, if even if property prices went up, all right, you will be falling between this range where you attract plenty of buyers. Right. This would be the iconic old Momentum Park. And of course, uh, these are some of the, uh, it's going to be a new icon in the heart of District 5. We see that the target TOP is 2023 Q3, Q2 2023. And of course, let's share with you some of uh, this information called the 100% quality mark achievement prior to TOP. So I'll share with all of you why this is so important. All right. So the developer actually engage China Jingye Private Limited as their main con. So this particular main con, all right, actually we see that the national average share is in the orange. This For this particular main con, we see that they actually hit their average score of more than 90% for the last uh, three or four years. So why is this very important for Momentum Park owners? Because for Momentum Park owners, right, all units, of course, for Momentum Park buyers, all units have to go through BCA quality mark check, all right? Like the flooring, the bathrooms, they would have to be pondered with, but for 24 hours to make sure there are no signs of leakage. And of course, the components in the units, the me mechanical and electrical fittings, the ceilings, the doors, the walls to make sure there's no water seepage and of course the window as well. So of course uh, this QM scheme was voluntary uh, uh, scheme, right? Of course close to 84,000 uh, units in Singapore actually committed to the QM scheme since 2002. So for, for this particular project Momentum Park, right? They are required to have full assessment of all 1862 units before they can obtain TOP. So for home buyers out there who are looking to buy a project and of course buy Momentum Park, you can have quality assurance because all units have to go through BCA quality mark check. All right. And of course the source of this article is from uh, Ministry of National Development. All right. And of course, I also want to share with you the maintenance fee. Uh, we have actually very, very attractive maintenance fee from one bedroom to uh, We see that maintenance fee uh, did not cross $300. And of course, for premium all the way to terrace, the maintenance is only uh, not crossing $400. And of course, if you take a look at Momentum Park, it actually has a 360 degree view, right? So what is on uh, the other side of Momentum Park, we see that these are some of the black and white houses. So units that are facing downwards south, they would be facing the seat and the park as well, all right? And of course, this, is, this would be the north view, the western view, the southern view, the eastern view. And of course, uh, this 
particular project momentum park uh, as i was in the show gallery today one of the buyers said wow it's like coming home to a resort right of course the the concept right uh, is inspired by amazon river right momentum park will also be blended in perfectly with kenridge park and we also, I also want to share something very interesting with you. That is what we call the beacon, right? Of course, this uh, majestic uh, nine towers will be lighted up by the beacon lights. So either way, you are coming back home from uh, either side towards Tuas or towards uh, ECP uh, from the AYE. From far, you can actually see that the lights, the beacon lights would light up. So this would definitely be one of the new icon. All right, it's going to be the new icon, the new majestic uh, icon in District 5. And of course, these are the grand arrival lobby. Look at the facilities here. It's truly like living in a resort. And of course, these are some of the great facilities. We see that the ship actually uh, of the river, right? Inspiration, the pool, shaped like a river with so many pots for you to actually swim in. And of course, in front of the strata, the terraces, uh, we have direct pool access. And of course, this are uh, the, the you'll be this would be uh from another view from the strata. And of course, for Momentum Park itself, you would have eight commercial units, and of course, you would have a great view of the sea if you are buying a unit. Uh, on a higher floor. So with that, uh, I hope to see all of you soon. For those who have yet to visit Momentum Park, uh, because many, many interests are actually gathered ready. And of course, uh, we have seen uh, many visitorship for the past few days. I think as of today, we are close to, uh, uh, we're close to having 4,000 visitorship. And I'm actually very amazed by the visitorship because this is a COVID period where visiting of the show flat requires uh, appointment booking. And of course, if all the safe social safe distancing measures kicked in. So uh, it is really, really seldom seen where there is a launch where, where I've seen so many people in the show gallery. So with that, I hope to see you soon and uh, I'll pass it back to Ramesh. Ramesh. Wow, thank you, Dave. I think you put in a lot of uh, work into that uh, from covering the macro location to micro location to the development itself. I think it's a very, very thorough presentation. Uh, thank you, Dave, so much for your time and uh, really putting in all the effort to share more about Nomenton Park, which is previewing now. So our listeners tuning in, if you're convinced that this is something that you want to consider seriously, please feel free to contact any of the Orange Tea Entire agents who have invited you to this seminar. I think they are more than, uh, they'd be more than willing, you, willing to make an appointment for you. Also to note that um, due to the safe distancing measures, there are only limited uh, appointment slots every day, but we still have seven days of preview. So uh, do contact our Orange Tea Entire agents and they'll be able to advise you when is the, what are the, available slots, you can come down uh, to view the sales gallery. Um, we can now open for the quick Q&A session. A gentle reminder, if, if you have any questions from what you've heard so far, you can type into the chat or you can type into the Q&A uh, room as well. We will be glad to answer any concerns or questions you have about the property market or about Momentum Park. Uh, I already see one question, Dave, I think this is for you. Uh, I think it's about the location of Nomenton Park. Uh, one of our listeners feels that is it's because it's the southern part of One North, isn't it too far from the heart of One North? Very, very specific. So what, what do you think? Is it? Um, okay. Yeah, so what do you have to say for that? Is, that? is it convenient? I mean, I we have been to that site quite often. So is that location convenient for maybe workers who are working in the One North? Yep. Okay. Uh, to share with, uh, to share, to, to actually answer this question, as uh, I was walking around the ground, um, I heard some of the investors actually uh, said this, right? Uh, in the northern one north side, all right, they are actually supplies for five coming up. In fact, with the new land, two more land parcels coming up, you are going to have actually uh, seven, but. 
for rental price for one bedrooms there, one North residences, they are actually transacted more than three thousand uh, dollars for one bedroom. So, the, in the investors' point of view, when I sat down with them, what they shared with me is this. So today, if I'm buying it and rent it out to a tenant, okay? So a tenant's point of view is, I want to save money. If I can rent Momentum Park one bedroom between one two thousand five to $2,008, I would save actually $700 to $1,000 in terms of rental. So as a tenant's point of view, I don't mind saving $1,000 every month. And of course, I have a shuttle bus to the Northern One North area. And it's only a few bus stops away. Even if you take a public bus, it's gonna be three or four bus stops away. So tenants would actually um, sacrifice, you know, uh, just being slightly away from them and they can actually save a lot of money. And of course, when Momentum Park is fully built up, it's gonna be a new facelift, new facilities that they can actually enjoy. And of course, uh, being away from the northern um, one north area, they will be away from the hustle and bustle of uh, uh, like, how do I say, uh, how do they share with me? They actually use this specific word. They said that um, it would not be so much of a congestion. And of course, over the weekends, I would have more peace because I'm located right on top of the hill. And of course, Kenridge Park is just right at the doorstep of Momentum Park. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. I think we have some uh, interesting comments coming in that, uh, you know, it's, it's just beside Media Police. So you will have a lot of Media Corp artists staying at uh, Momentum Park. So I think we tend to underestimate the size of Momentum Park. It's not just uh, the tech sector, there's the science parks, and then there's Media Police. There's it's really a lot of uh, employment sectors within that area. So I think it's, you don't really have to be concerned about the distance. I think if any person is going to look out for a rental, then uh, with the, as like Dave mentioned, with the beacon shining on top, I think Normanton Park will be the first choice, the most prominent choice out there. The smaller boutique project will lose in, in uh, comparison for prominence. Um, another question that came up is about the size. I think this is something that a lot of, uh, Bias may have asked you as well, uh, 1,862 units. Uh, what is your take on this? Is this a good thing? Am I going to have a swimming pool which is very uh, packed over the weekends? Uh, how do you address this issue, Dave? Um, I would say that um, when, I, when you look at how it's being built, the facilities, right? In fact, the developer used 80% of the land for landscape. Right, and 20% only for the, uh, the blocks, right? So if you ask me, when we went for the architect briefing, the architect actually mentioned, you need two full days to finish walking the entire Normanton Park. If you were to explore uh, the facilities bit by bit, you will need two days to complete the entire walk in uh, Normanton Park itself. So that's actually how huge it is. So if um, for those who haven't really seen, I really urge you to come to the sale gallery because they have a really, really very uh, nice model to showcase every single facilities uh, that's there to be shown to the buyers. I'm getting the luxury uh, villas in Bali vibe, you know, where it's so huge and you go on a holiday and you really, even when you stay for a weekend, you can't finish looking at all the facilities, I think it's the same vibe here. So it's, you're really like living in a resort. So it's, it's really exciting. Uh, maybe one more question for Raymond. Usually when we have talks like that, buyers tend to think we are doing the sales talk. I mean, you have shared a lot about the emerging trends. What do you have to say to people who think that we are just telling them this and uh, <laughs> you know, they buyers tend to be a bit apprehensive that we're just doing sales talk. So I mean, Raymond, in your past, you have uh, advised many clients to make a lot of money as well. So what do you have to say to our buyers listening today if they are still a bit uncertain whether it's the right time to go in or not? Well, it's a very good question. I guess most buyers always, you know, when you look at the price, it's a big purchase. It takes a lot of uh, 
I would say a lot of guts, a lot of because there's a lot of fear at the same time they worry. But I can say you are in good hands because in Singapore it's unlike other nations, other countries. Because our government don't just control supply, they control demand. Look at the COVID measures that even in this pandemic, we also still come up with this measure that is to uh, make sure that people don't the developers don't keep reissuing options. And yet the take up rate is still very strong. So I can say that no other countries is like Singapore, given that there's so much developments happening. And at the same time, we are so land scarce. And the best part I can say is that whatever our government always plan, it comes to pass. So all the developments that they pointed out, myself pointed out, I can say it's like a crystal ball that you can see 10 years later when Greater Southern Waterfront happened, everything happened, come into place. You will say, ah, yeah, would I know uh, we have listened to Raymond and Dave uh, and Ramesh. Uh. Then at that time, 2000, 2005 PSF, ah, yeah, I should have bought then. Uh. So don't wait too long. <laughs> yes, yes, I agree, Raymond. In fact, I mean, from my experience uh, doing especially mega projects, the, the initial launch is very, very crucial because the I've seen many instances where over time, even launches, I, I remember one launch, I think it was the Florence Residences, the take-up initially wasn't very good. But over the period of time, the, the two years, uh, the price went up multiples. So that's why I think for mega launches, we have seen it many, many times. That's why we insist that you, you look at this project very seriously. If you have the means, if you have to stretch a bit, I think it's worth the stretch at this, at this juncture. So there are many ways you can uh, actually uh, find money to invest. I mean, there's, there's many creative solutions. I think our Orange Tea agents are very well versed in uh, trying to find solutions for you. So if you're curious how you can do this, if you think your money is locked up somewhere, do contact again one of our Orange Tea agents. They might uh, find solutions for you that you might not be aware of. So I think that the best thing you can do is, is at least do a due diligence for yourself. You know, what's the... But like uh, Raymond shared earlier, there are many places to put your money, I think, but this has always been one of the safest and uh, 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 best savings plan that you can uh, opt for in Singapore. So um, I'm looking for any more questions. Uh, okay, interesting question from Michael. What are the long-term and short-term yield in Nomenton Park? Uh, either Dave or Raymond, I think Dave would be a bit more well uh, well. I think he's talking about rental yield. Uh, yeah, we have actually uh, seen the tr price trend, uh, the, the rental price trend actually trended in uh, D4 and D5. So D4 and 5 actually we are right, very close to each other. So for the average rental yield that we see now in, in District 5 itself is about 3 to 3.6%. Yeah, so with the future greater southern waterfront all up and running, who knows? <laughs> and if, if I do remember correctly, the two days ago the news came out, uh, the, all the analysts in Singapore are predicting up to 5% increase in, uh, in the price index for 2021. So for the long-term yield, if you're talking about capital appreciation, uh, that's, that's the price increase that we're expecting, 5% for the whole of this year. And as Raymond mentioned, the uh, on block market is also heating up, so we expect a very strong showing for this year. Po possibly better than 2020 because uh, we're already coming out from the pandemic. So I think that's all we have to share for today. Uh, I don't see any more questions coming in, so it has been a very, uh, I hope it's been a very fruitful, informative evening where all you property hunters out there uh, get more insights uh, on the property market and uh, have a good uh, overview of the latest, hottest launch in the market, uh, Nomenton Park. So again, last but not least, if you have any queries, anything at all, go and contact your Orange agents. We, will be, we are just waiting to help you with your uh, property portfolio uh, expansion. Also, if you want a copy of either Dave's or Raymond Koo's presentation report, feel free to approach your representing Orange and Thai agent for a copy. I think that brings us to uh, eventual end for today's session. I hope all of you found it as useful as I did and I thank you
for your attendance. Have a very beautiful evening and hope to see you all at Nomenton Park. This is uh, Ramesh signing out. Good night. <laughs>